Good morning. This week's parsha is Parshat Vayechi, the final parsha of the book of Bereshit. And in this parsha, we read about the death, the end of the life and the death of Yaakov, of the final and possibly greatest of the forefathers. And I'd like to read to you what the Torah says about uh, his, uh, one of his last conversations with the son Yosef and bring out some particularly interesting and relevant points. The Torah says in Perak Memazai in Pasuk Chaftet, chapter 47, verse 29, V'yikruvu yemei Yisrael lemut, and the days of Israel came close to death. V'yikra livno le Yosef, and he called his son Yosef, v'yomelo, and he said to him, Imna matzati chen beinecha, if I have found favor in your eyes, which is a humble way of asking for a favor, simna yadcha tachat yurechi, please place your hand under my thigh, that is symbolic of taking an oath, or the way in which an oath was taken since uh, Avraham, since Avraham gave that command to his servant Eliezer. Do with me kindness and truth. Please do not bury me in Egypt. I will lie down with my forefathers. You will take me up from Egypt. Bury me in their grave. The Yomar and Yosef replied, Anochi e sechid varecha. I will do as you command. So he's asking that when he dies, he be buried in the cave of Machpelah, where Avram and Yitzhak are buried, not to be buried in Egypt. There are two points I'd like to draw out. The first one is the way this incident is introduced. The days of Yisrael, of Yaakov, came close to death. His days came close to death, not he himself came close to death. The uh, second point is that he says to uh, Yosef, when I lie down with my forefathers, take me out of Egypt and bury me in their grave. What is this lying down with his forefathers? So the first idea, that his days came close to death. The Chofetz Chaim in his book, Shem Olam, has a wonderful idea that he quotes from the Zohar, from the great Kabbalistic work. He says that when a person passes away, every day of their life that they lived comes before Hashem, and the day itself gives testimony to what was done and what was achieved on that day. That uh, if a day will come, if, for example, we know that we've had days where it was just wonderful and productive, we were full of life, we got so much done, such a day will come and say to Hashem, Hashem, on me, these mitzvot were done, these things were achieved, this holiness was actualized. So, uh, the, the day testifies, unfortunately we have days which will come to Hashem and say, on me, so many opportunities were wasted. So many things went wrong. But every day has its own personality. Every day comes close. Every day stands before Hashem when a person leaves this world and speaks about what was achieved. And, uh, and the Chofetz Chaim takes it further. He says, every mitzvah that we do gives holiness to the person. Every time that a person does something positive, he achieves and, and embodies a greater level of holiness. But he says... When our days, what actually gives holiness to our days, to time, the holiness of time comes not from mitzvot, he says, but from Shabbos. It is the holiness of Shabbos that gives holiness to every single day. And therefore, he says, we mustn't think of Shabbos as a one-day-a-week event. Shabbos is something that happens every single day of the week. Some, Shabbos is something that carries through. If a Shabbos is made holy... An entire week is uplifted. If a Shabbos, God forbid, the opportunity of a Shabbos is missed, then a whole week loses something. When he was coming close to die, all of his days, so to speak, prepared themselves to speak to Hashem to come in front of Hashem. That's idea number one. Idea number two, Yaakov says, I will lie down with my forefathers. What's he referring to? Now, the simple meaning would be referring to the burial. When he is actually placed in the cave of Machpelah with his forefathers, then he will literally be laid down, he will be buried, he will be placed in the cave with his forefathers. However, the Torah clearly isn't referring to the actual burial, because he says, do not bury me in Egypt. When I lie down with my forefathers, take me out of Egypt and bury me in their grave. Can't mean when you bury me, take me out of Egypt and, and bury me there. I mean, that, that clearly the order is wrong. He's referring, Rashi points out, He's referring to his actual death. He says, when I pass away, when I die, which is referred to as, v'shachavti mavotai, lying down with my forefathers, then I want you please to bury me with them also. 
But the very act of death is called here, and in many places throughout the Tanakh, is called lying down with his forefathers. Why is that? So Rashi explains here, uh, I beg your pardon, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein explains, he has a wonderful explanation. He says you need to know that sometimes people do not just represent themselves, do not just stand for themselves, but they stand for us as a connectedness to something far greater. So, for example, he says, we find with Yaakov himself, when speaking about Binyamin going down to e Egypt, he was so hesitant when Yosef, who they just knew as the viceroy of Egypt, demanded the presence of Binyamin. Yaakov says to his children, how could I send Binyamin? If Binyamin goes, it will be as if I have lost Yosef and Rachel. Binyamin is my last remembrance of my beloved wife Rachel and my beloved son Yosef. Rachel is dead. I can only assume that Yosef is dead. But to me, Binyamin is having all three of them. And if I would lose Binyamin, I would lose all of them. That's the way Rashi explains the verses over there. If I would lose Binyamin, I'd lose all of them. Binyamin was so much more than just the man that he was. And that, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein says, applies to Yaakov himself. Yaakov was the last of our forefathers. Yaakov carried with him Yitzchak. He was Yitzchak's son. He carried with him Avraham. He knew Avraham. He met Avraham. And so, when Yaakov dies, it wasn't simply that Yaakov was dying. It was that that era of the forefathers was passing. It's that he was lying down. He was dying together with Avraham and Yitzchak. When he died, Avraham and Yitzchak died for us again. We lost them anew because we lost our last connection to them. And there are many cases like that that we need to know. Many people, many relationships that don't just represent themselves, but they represent so much more than that. Within this idea, perhaps the greatest example of all of this is the idea of Kiddush Hashem and Chilol Hashem, sanctifying Hashem's name and, God forbid, desecrating Hashem's name. The idea that every Jewish person is viewed as a representative of Hashem. The way in which we behave carries with it not only ourselves, but the reputation of God himself as well. People see a Jewish person behaving honestly, with integrity, with uprightness. They say, see, that that is what Judaism is about. That's what Hashem is about. God forbid a person behaves in a way lacking integrity. They say, ah, oh, this Judaism, it's not so good. It's not so much. Somebody, as it was very painful for me to hear, somebody told me that they have... As a, that they have, as a religious person, been involved with so many other religious people who have done them wrong, financially, monetarily, that one of their family members said, why are you still religious? And they said, my relationship with, with Hashem, my relationship with God is about God. It's not about, uh, not about people. The truth is, you need to be quite mature and sophisticated to take such an approach. Because for many of us, look at that, we say it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible reflection on God and on the Torah. But why should this be a reflection at all? We know that people are people. We know that people are fallible. But the answer is this idea. That people represent for us so much more than just who they are themselves. Who they are themselves is just an aspect. But every person is a symbol of something much greater than that. Psychologists tell us that a parent figure represents, especially a father, represents for us and helps us to form and shape our relationship with Hashem. A person, God forbid, does not have a good relationship with their father. They're going to have a lot of baggage with them in their relationship with Hashem. Even when they know in their head that that's not the case. Sometimes people simply are bigger than what they present themselves to us. It can be a wonderful thing, can be a very terrible thing. But it's something that we need to realize is a, is a true force. And so when Yaakov was dying, he makes this point to Yosef. You need to know, when I die, it won't only be me that's dying. It will be the whole era of the forefathers which is drawing to an end. And we need to look at the people in our lives and understand what they represent to us. Understand what's fair to view within them, what's not. Treasure the connections that they bring us, which are so much more than, that, more than, more than they are themselves. And we need to understand for ourselves what we represent to other people and to live our lives accordingly. Have a wonderful Shabbos.